During a virtual town hall with Anderson Cooper on CNN, Joe Biden got a question from someone who most likely has COVID-19. She has all the symptoms of COVID-19 and healthcare professionals suspect that that's what she has, although she hasn't been able to confirm that because she can't get a test. Now, she explained her situation to Joe Biden and how she has to pay $2,000 per month for her family's healthcare and they have to choose between food, rent, or healthcare. Which one do they choose? And Joe Biden, as the presumptive Democratic Party nominee, if we want to call him that at this point in time, he was supposed to be a leader and reassure her that everything is going to be okay and come forward with real solutions to help people in her and her family's predicament. But what he offered instead was um, nothing more than word salad. Take a look. I'm wearing this mask to protect my family as I've been diagnosed based on my symptoms for the coronavirus. Although I cannot be tested due to the limited number of tests available here in New York City. My husband and I are both hardworking, college educated Americans who, like countless other Americans, will suffer as a result of this pandemic. I work full time for a small company that does not offer health benefits. My husband is a freelancer. We currently pay over $2,000 a month for health insurance for our family of three. My question for you is that when our savings account inevitably runs out due to him not being able to work right now, what is it that we sacrifice? Do we sacrifice food, rent, or health care? You should not have to sacrifice anything. Let me say that again. You should not have to sacrifice anything. Not just because it's the fair thing to be taking care of your entire family and every family in your circumstance, but because it's best for the whole country, the entire economy. It's not just doing a favor for any individual. Number one, your health care, you should not have to pay a penny for testing, and it should be available to you by now. We were promised it a while ago. You sh it should be available for you to be tested and determine what needs to be done. Number two, the House just passed an unemployment uh, proposal that increases by $600. The unemployment insurance should get whether or not you were part of, you have been covered by unemployment insurance or paid into it before, including your husband who may have been, he's a, a, uh, uh, a entrepreneur on his own, doesn't have employees. You will be covered. And that should be done, but that requires the government to be the federal government to help the states set up the unemployment offices in a way that they can handle this enormous, enormous call on the need for being the, the, the unemployment insurance. Thirdly, the cost of a test should be absolutely zero for you. Number one. And number two, I think the House and the Senate are going to have to go back and make sure. So after listening to him give that answer, ask yourself, if you were in that woman's predicament, what would you take away from that? Would you feel any better? Would you have any sort of reassurance that everything is going to be okay? That if he's elected, he's going to fix the issues that led to her being in this current predicament? Her job doesn't offer health insurance. Her husband, he does freelance work. So they have to pay $2,000 per month. I'm assuming that they, you know, are buying insurance on the exchanges that him and Obama put together. What are you going to do specifically to help her out? He offered her zero solutions. Now he says, um, you should not have to sacrifice anything. I'll repeat that. You should not have to sacrifice anything. Well, you know, nobody should have to sacrifice anything. Nobody should have to choose between rent food and health care. Nobody should die because they don't have health insurance, but the reality is that they will. So should not doesn't mean anything. What it coulda shoulda. Fuck are you gonna do? That's the question. What are you gonna do? And his answer in a nutshell is uh nothing. Nothing for them. Now he always likes to number his points. You know, he'll go through point one, point two, point three. And um point number two I believe was you should not have to pay a penny for a COVID-19 test. And then when he moved on to uh, point number three, he said the cost of the test should be zero dollars for her. Awesome. Except let's uh, extend that a little bit further. Let's assume that she tests positive for COVID-19 and uh, then she needs health care. Then what? What if her husband and baby gets it? 
Then what? Do you understand why these types of milquetoast solutions never suffice? Why people become increasingly desperate after each successive election? It's because a free test doesn't mean anything. Healthcare is what people need. So not only should she get that test for free, of course, she should get the healthcare that she needs for free. But again, we have to extend that logic. Let's say somebody is experiencing cancer symptoms. Should that test be free? Should treatment for their cancer be free? Joe Biden would answer no. He probably wouldn't directly say it. He'd beat around the bush and use doublespeak to explain that. But his answer is no. If you don't have health care in America, Joe Biden thinks it's perfectly reasonable for you to die. He said this, he admitted this, by saying he would veto Medicare for all. He admitted this in an interview on MSNBC with Lawrence O'Donnell. In the event, a Democratic-controlled House and Senate historically passed Medicare for all, he would veto it. He would veto the bill that saves 68,000 American lives every single year. And that's a conservative estimate because it doesn't take into account underinsured people. So do you understand why when progressives and the left told Democrats that the selectability argument was bullshit, uh, why we were so vocal about that? Because he's offering no solutions. He's offering no solutions. Can anyone name a single policy that Joe Biden has proposed? Ask the average voter, ask a Joe Biden supporter. I bet you they couldn't name one. Because this man stands for nothing. He's friends with Obama and he's electable, so uh, you should vote for him in spite of his terrible record. In spite of the fact that he's going to do fuck all for Americans if he's elected. So let's say, you know, we're able to be lucky enough to kick Donald Trump out of office. Then we get Joe Biden. Then what? People continue to die or go bankrupt because they don't have health care. People continue to um, lose their homes, lose their jobs because of COVID-19. And you won't offer a federal jobs guarantee, no Medicare for all, no robust solutions that would actually fix the problems that we're dealing with. Like, what do we have to look forward to? What do we have to look forward to? Because the Democrats don't want to offer us any real solutions. They want to nibble around the edges and tell us to shut the fuck up and accept our crumbs. And when we say we want more than crumbs, then they uh, try to browbeat us and guilt trip us into supporting their shitty politicians. Like, do you understand why so many people don't come out to vote? Because Democrats aren't offering them anything. This used to be the party of the working class, and now look at them. They're a bunch of clowns. They are a bunch of clowns. Pink hat wearing Republicans. That's what they are. They don't actually care about helping people. The only thing that they care about, the ones in power, are keeping their jobs, keeping their seats warm, making sure that, you know, their futures will be intact. But for regular Americans who don't have access to wealth or power, they couldn't care less about us. And Joe Biden proved it. Even if he wanted to, or uh, could have been able to articulate a clear vision, does anyone believe that it would have been sufficient? Does anyone believe that that mother and her family would have felt, you know, like they had a reason to support him? Of course not. So that was absolutely embarrassingly pathetic, and I genuinely feel bad for her. There are so many people in this predicament, so many people I know personally who lost their jobs or who work in healthcare, and they're the one provider for the family because daycare is too expensive, and they're working with COVID-19 people, testing them. Like, people are watching the world devolve into chaos, and they're worried about losing their livelihoods. And the best thing that Democrats could do right now is assure them with a huge policy vision that everything's going to be okay because they have fixes to all of these problems. But what they're doing is offering nothing. They're putting up an alleged rapist with, uh, you know, cognitive decline. And they're telling us we better be happy with this. Otherwise, we're to blame if Donald Trump wins. Yeah. Well, we'll see about that. Because if you lose again... You have to take responsibility. Now, I know that that's a joke because they won't. But um, don't let them guilt trip you into thinking that you're responsible for their losses. 
their incompetence is what led to their defeat if you know joe biden in fact loses so i'll leave that there girly mike fettuccine needs your support on patreon what a loser Visit patreon.com slash humanist report to support the low ratings humanist report. Sad. My views are much higher.